drilling a hole here and um, trying to make sure the engine's level because I'm going to lock it down, you know, in a, where it's perfectly level so I can run it or do whatever I need to. And uh, while I'm building it, I don't want it flopping around. So got to drill me some uh, some holes here for a little bit. Nice thing about that kit, it includes every little gasket I need. So. Looks like somebody has been into the uh, fuel management side of it, where the fuel plate goes. I wonder what they did to that. head back fresh from the machine shop so it was in pretty good shape didn't have to do anything valve job and I think they took seven thousandths off um, making sure everything was straight and the heads not warped and uh, overall I think it was a it was the, the right thing to do the, it's a good decision I think Instead of buying that other head, plus it was like came out about two hundred dollars cheaper. So, all for that. Okay, get close to putting the head gasket on here. I gotta figure out which. There's no upside down and right side up here. No markings. Hmm. Maybe there's only one way it can go on. There's only one way it can go on. And that's it. Coming together. Still have to get a fan and a pulley and all that good stuff. Need to time the pump, get the head on. Uh, I need to order some new head bolts if I'm going to go with new head bolts. Still on the fence about that. See if I can find a good deal on some. But uh, yeah, I put a little paint on this head. Just want it to match the uh yeah, match the rest of the block. Not really important, but uh yeah. Put, yeah, put some valve covers on it just to uh protect the from getting paint all over the, the valves. And I I don't know if you notice I have the uh white uh, anyway they're marked with white marks. They're uh the upgraded springs. 
Uh, I think they're 60 pounds. So let me rev this engine up to uh, up to about 4,000 RPM, which I already put the governor um, governor spring kit in the pump the other day. I think you'll see that in this video. So uh, those two pieces have been handled. Um, I'm trying to match the same power that was in the truck with the 6.4 uh, liter diesel from Ford. And I know I'm not going to be exactly there, but I'm going to be close. I want about 300, 350 horsepower. So uh, I'm trying to prepare this motor to be able to to rev up to. Uh, normally, this motor cuts off about 2,700 RPM. The motor that was in the truck um, usually shuts off at 3,700 RPM. So it's about a thousand RPM difference. Um, I forget what the uh, where it makes torque at. It's a pretty big difference in torque too, about 1,000 RPM. So what I'm trying to do is make this engine so it can rev a little higher than it normally does and it can match the other, uh, the power of the other motor. And the reason I'm doing that is so that the transmission in the truck works well with this engine. So anyway, I'm getting there. And uh, I bought a little peace of mind. I got thinking about it. I don't want to use the old pump in here, and this is the heart of the motor. I mean, it really is. The lifeblood of the engine is runs off of this, and this is not the place to cheap out. So I bought the the best oil pump that I know of. Uh, it's Melling, and it should be made in the United States, which doesn't always necessarily <laughs> equate to uh, which doesn't always equate to um, quality, but in this case, I do believe it does. I'm going to make sure it's marked that way. It's a M251. It's not the high volume pump. In fact, I don't think Melling sells a high volume pump, but this is the one that matches this engine. That's not cool. It got shipped banging around in this box. They should have protected it better. But uh, let's see what it looks like. See if there is a quality difference between this pump and the Chinese Bay pump. I can tell right out of the box it already looks looks better. It doesn't look like somebody just took a file and you know tried to make all this stuff mesh together well. You can see made in USA. That's a little confidence. Even the gears and everything, backlash. Okay. I mean this pump is probably fine and probably works okay. But uh I know milling has got a good reputation. And um They've been around a long time. All the way back to where I used to do Volkswagen stuff. And uh, having a milling uh, pump in your uh, Volkswagen is very desirable. So, I mean, this one would probably work just as well. But this is supposed to be the high volume pump too. Maybe I'll build another engine with this in it. Don't want to take a chance with this engine right now though. This is going to be a you know main piece of trans form of transportation and I want to make sure that it uh, that it works well. It was worth the peace of mind. Right, I'm going to be taking that pump out and installing this one. Okay, well that's taken care of. Now I'm going to go and set the timing on the, the P pump, the fuel injection pump. Uh, I've already got Everything set at top dead center. That's my uh, number one piston. You can tell that the valves are, you know, equal. So it's at the uh, compression stroke, which would be top dead center. I've got it pinned in the back where the uh, the cam won't move anymore. There's a little pin. Well, you can see it in the bottom. Pin right here that I've got poked in there and locks the cam at uh, top dead center. That's done. And I've got the pump also pinned. Well, they say the, the way you know you're locked in is to put it in at an angle and then twist it as you put it in. And you'll feel it. You'll feel it go in. So you'll know it's, it's locked. But if you go, see, now I know it's locked. So um, everything's at top dead center. The, the timing on my pump is locked at what the factory is. 
And the way you know what the factory setting is, is you look on the little engine plate, mine's all torn up. Hopefully you guys can see this. See it says uh, 215 horsepower at 2600 RPM. Now where is my timing? Oh, there it is. Timing. 13.5 degrees. And I'm thinking I want 16 to 17 degrees. 16 and a half to 17 degrees. And I'm going to shoot for 16 and a half. I'm a little bit on the conservative side. So um, I'm going to follow uh, some instructions I found on the internet. And I will include those in the description. And um, hopefully help you guys out if it works out okay on mine. Yeah, I got everything lined up here with the marks set. All right. Got my timing wheel. I've got it set at top dead center. The gist of it, we're not connected here. I've got this loose, and it won't spin my pump because this is loose and it's not tightened down. And what I want to do is I need to unpin my uh, this gear and unpin my crank so I can turn my, uh, my crankshaft um, counterclockwise retarding the timing and what I want to do since I want to be at uh, 16 and a half degrees I need to add three degrees I'm this pump is 13 and a half degrees is time from the factory and what I want to do is make it 16 and a half and what I'm going to do is I need to go back three degrees on this wheel and then I can lock this bolt down and that will set my timing at 16 and a half so hopefully it's as simple as that so I'm going to go ahead and reverse this and set it at three degrees and then lock it down Got three degrees we're ready to lock this down and torque this bolt but what I need to do is, um, I need to unpin this. I need to take this pin out because I don't want it to break off in there. From what I read, uh, the more you want to hot rod it, the more you want to advance the timing up to like uh, 18 to 22 degrees, something like that. Um, and what it does, it, it opens it up, you know, in a higher RPM range. Hey, thanks for watching my channel. If you haven't subscribed already, uh, please do for future updates. Remember, build it, don't buy it.